Hello, this is Lennon Luna, the Ashby Hippie, a, what should I say, a.k.a. I forgot. And I'm about to tell you about my experience at the Death Show. And uh, actually at the Death Show, further show. <laughs> but it's still, you know, the Deadhead scene. Well, I just went there on Friday and Saturday for two nights. And it was the most unbelievable experience I've ever experienced, I've ever went in my life. Best shows. Crazy. And I was, I'm about to talk about, you know, to people, to Ashby's audience or anybody with disabilities about when you get to the dead show. I want to tell you from my point of view as a person with Asperger's, but I don't like it. I just don't want to define myself as an Asperger's guy. I just want to be myself. I don't like accepting labels anymore, but I'm going to tell you from my point of view. When I first came to the show, to the deadhead scene in the year 2009, I saw the dead at the in ISOT Center in New Jersey. I was extremely shy who to talk to. I was too afraid to speak to people, and and it was really you know the typical thing you know. Um, I was too nervous around everybody. I didn't mean, think I didn't have meltdowns, but and then I realized, and then when I it was it was very beautiful. I did speak to some people. It was really cool. At all, which is which actually all I can say is, but the thing is you know. I didn't talk to anybody at that point. I mean, that did talk to a few people, but when I was running around the halls because, you know, I, during the intermission, a lot of people wanted to give me fives. And I noticed all the hippies dancing, and it was very beautiful to watch. You know, I noticed all the people hugging. I was like, I wish that could happen to me when at that show in 2009. And then in 2010, I came back to the deadhead scene with Further. Well, I did went to see Fish in 2009, but I only talked to a few people, like the same. And then further came, and in 2009, I was like, yeah! Now I can get used to this, talk to a lot of people, make some friends. And then from this point, I went to seven and a half shows. And on the, in the last shows I went, the two shows, it was at MCU Park, which was I returned from 2010, which I first saw further, now to 2012, which was two years. Groovy, baby. <laughs> but I made a lot of friends there. Lots and lots of friends. Including this girl named Audrey, who gave me the best advice of all time. And I'm about to tell you. She told me this, why do you keep calling yourself autistic? You shouldn't be accepting labels. Because what you are is you. Sure, you have a different mentality than everybody in this whole you know, scene. I mean, you think differently. I mean, you can, even though you can eat, see, walk, and feel, and you have the same sensibilities as everybody else, but you can still, and, and even though, like I say again, you have a different mentality, than everybody, you're accepted in the deadhead scene. You can be black, you can be white, you can be disabled, you can be normal, you can be anything. You're all accepted. As long as you embrace the power of peace and love. That's what she told me. And I gave her a promise that the next full tour, I'll definitely be seeing them. So everybody with um with any disability just oh yeah. This is um this is a message to them. And then I made lots of friends. And then that it killed my shyness. I started hugging everybody. Everybody hugged me. And it feels so awesome, so wonderful, so far out. It was great. If you can if you can if you if any of you want to join the deadhead, see I mean go go ahead, be my guest. I mean I'm not forcing you guys to do it, but you know it's a recommendation. It's beautiful, it's awesome, it's nice. I mean, sure, they do a little bit of drugs, but come on, that's not, a, that's not, the whole point is not about drugs. It's about embracing the power of peace and love and unity. Just for all, for all of you that I'm talking to, disables, all the disables, including the audience, and Aspies, and Tourette's, don't be afraid to hug people. They'll love you at the dead, at the dead shows. Not just the dead shows, but, you know, straight cheese incident fish. Any jam band scene that involves like just like the Grateful Dead, I mean they'll love you. I mean even but I know not everybody will feel the same. But try to be careful when you say hi to some people. Well, not everybody you know can be you know nice and peaceful. But some can be jerks. I have went through an experience with some people in the past. 
But is that's all I can say. I mean, just embrace the power of it. And I'm also gonna talk about my ideology of selling out. I was watching this documentary called Tide Eyed, and they were talking about the deadhead scene. And there's some people that said that they sold out because they have to work for a living and they have to war they have to move on. I mean, I can understand where they come from. I mean, and the thing is, you know, some people ended up, you know, taking the wrong direction. But here's a lesson to you. Selling out can be the worst thing you can ever do in your life. I mean, working for a living, I don't mind. But if you want to work for, you know, to be a fucking big shot, like lots of, like lots of money, lots of cars, being fucking wealthy, and owning a business that you can go anywhere and just put everybody out, then that's a fucking lunacy. Because that's an example of greed and excess and materialism and author and, and, and materialism. Sorry, I say authoritarian. And, oh, yeah, authoritarian because you know you own you you know control people like you know they're your workers. So basically, just don't go into that direction because that's what the major problem. That's what causes the most problems in the world: authoritarian, materialism, excess, and greed. I mean. I mean, it's not bad to get a job. I mean, I, I understand where you come from. I mean, I agree with communal living and, you know, selling products and sharing the wealth and, you know, sharing everybody. And that's what I'm about to tell you and how I got this headband later on. I'm about to use it as an example later. But when you get a job, and I can understand that you want to be rich when you want to get your rewards, you know, for working very hard, but... When you get rewards, you have to use it with responsibility. If you don't, you're going to end up just like the person you were against when you were young. A greedy scumbag. I mean, I know there are nice rich people. I mean, Bill Gates, I mean, he's the, he's the, he used to be the richest in the world. I'm not sure he still is, but he's probably to give all of his money to charity. And that's groovy. And I love that guy. But please don't end up like fucking Donald Trump. He's a fucking douche. But the thing is, you know, when you get when you um when you get a job, always keep your ideology for all you hippies that are getting a job and you know trying to like you know working for a living. But don't sell out to materialism and being fucking greedy. Keep your ideologies of peace and love within you because that will you know save the world from from its destruction by the human race. Just embrace it. Keep it in you. Once you embrace it, don't let go. Because it's the best way you can keep inside of you. And that's where it comes. It comes honesty, comes unity, comes friendship, comes the and the whole beautiful feeling that we have to do something to save this world, either through you know stopping wars, environmentalism, taking down the green, which with walls occupy Wall Street, which I definitely agree on them. But please don't let go of those ideologies. And when you get and when you work and get you on um, rewards for working for a living, like I say again many times, they always will become responsibility. Like in Spider-Man, with great power comes great responsibility. You have to use it. Recall. You have to be careful when you. Get a job and anything. I'm not against work. Get you know. Um, I'm not against you know getting jobs. I mean, yeah, I agree with the whole communal living with the hippies. But you know, don't forget what really defines you. That's what I'm trying to say. And for those aging baby boomers that are coming to the age of 65, it's time to you know for those who want to be hippie again. You know the feeling that the Peter Pan inside of them. Just let it go. Let it go. Release it. Get back out there and join, you know, rejoin the deadhead scene because it's still pretty much alive. You know how you want one one example? This guy I met at the dead show, he was an old 66-year-old dude and he was really cool to hang out. And he used to follow the dead when he was in his 20s, but now he had to get a job to make a living. And now he had his pension. Yes, no, and now he's retired and now he gets his pension. But look, he rejoined the deadhead scene. That's awesome what he did. It's beautiful. 
If you want to rejoin, relive, you know, your hippie experience, you know, when you retire, you don't have to worry about jobs, just go ahead and go back out there. It's not just further. There's also, you know, other Grateful Dead oriented events, you know, the solo projects of Mickey Hart, Bill Kreutzmann. I hope they, the dead will unite, but they have to put, you know, John Kendall sick as guitar player because he, he makes a great cherry imitator and a great guitar player also. But you can also see Fish, the String Cheese Incident. I mean, you can relive it. I mean, even though you are old, just feel young. That's the best way that that's going to be improving your lives, man. Just go back out there, man. Be happy. And also, by the way, I'm about to tell you about my how I got this headband. When I was using the example of communal living, you know, sharing the wealth and sharing your your valuables, you know, to you know, communicate with everybody that equals, you know, making new friends. This is how I got it. Originally, this was $20, but the girl named Audrey gave me the best advice in the world. Actually gave me this to me. Gave this to me. Isn't it beautiful? Nice headband. Yeah, and also I got free stuff from the deadheads, like a, like a bead, a pin bead, you know, stick it in, and a button, and I just, and, and it's beautiful. They gave me free stuff, and, and I can I have no idea I was that nice over there. And they told me, you're a cool person. And I got two nicknames, by the way. It's it's crazy Lenny because <laughs> I'm a very hyper guy, but in a good way. And the walking encyclopedia hippie. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> oh my god, I just love like, talking to deadheads. I mean, it, it's beautiful when you get there. And like I say again, when you go into the deadheads, and don't be afraid or any other scene that will jam best, just don't be afraid, embrace it. For anybody who's incredibly shy, just go out there. Don't be afraid. They're not going to hurt. Most people are not going to hurt. Yeah, I mean, there are some assholes in there, but, you know, you get the feeling. And once you embrace it, you'll never let it go. You can be working. You can be doing anything. But those memories will be with you for all times. And, I, and I'm a little disgusted that, you know, I'm back to the sell-off thing. But I'm a little disgusting that they did it. You know, work for, you know, consumerism, materialism, just because they grew up. But by growing up, do you actually mean taking all the ideologies of peace and love and unity that you learned in the hip in, in your hippie part of life that for those of you for those of you who are hippie and throwing it into the trash can and saying, you know, oh, oh that was back then, you know, I was dumb and stupid. I thought peace and love, you know, was this and this and that, but you have to look at reality. But that is reality. It's just that the people are too afraid to accomplish that. You just don't throw that away just by growing up. I mean, I understand when you grow up, but you no, know, keep those. That's what's going to save the world in these days. I mean, you got Occupy, you got the environmentalism, you got Greenpeace, which, hang on. Got to get this out. Which, look. I'm an actually an official member of it. I mean, look, see that? I'm a member of Greenpeace, and I, and I work to save the environment. And I'm part of Occupy Wall Street, like I show you on the other videos with my, you know, with my um, jean jacket, and I still keep to this day with the 99%. And I'm also trying to work for, you know, to promote world pacifism, world peace. And here's a message, you know, to um, this girl I met on Hit Farms, but unfortunately I hurt her feelings. I had to say I'm sorry that um, I never gave up on working for world peace. I will always try to, you know, I'll even give up my life for world peace because that would be the way for all of everybody to embrace the cosmic energy of peace and love, which is beautiful to experience. I mean, don't experience hate. Embrace it, spread around the world, and keep it in your soul makes you happy, that makes you joyful, that makes you righteous. So, I'm, and here's the last word about when you want to work in the job. Work in, a, in, in, work in jobs that's going to do you for the benefit of your life. Don't not give in into being greedy and materialistic. Also, very excessive. Just keep the ideologies of peace and love with you. Because that will be the best way you can ever build. In my mind, if you look on way later in life, it will be the best decision you've ever done. 
So have a groovy day and dust the diamond, my groovy dudes. Dust the diamond. Peace and